the new channel. The new channel. Hashtag TNC now. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following shows are those of the host, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, I think that will be us, Una, for now. So, Sir Nato is still about to connect, but I'm here, Ariza, your co-host for Hashtag Parasabayan. I'm so excited to welcome you all tonight. I think Sir Nato has been able to connect, so I'll pass you over to him. Sir Nato, good evening. Good evening. So, hello and welcome to Parasabayan. Uh, of course, here on the uh, new channel, our passion transforms a community that sees all things new. I'm Nato Agbeni. I'm streaming from Quezon City. And uh, welcome to uh, Hashtag Parasabayan. Hello, you're still watching Paras Bayan. We're here with our co-host, of course, uh, the super beautiful and intelligent Ariza <laughs> Nakong. And tonight, we also have a very young guest, and he's going to discuss about um, next-gen farming. But before that, we'll have, let's welcome Ariza Nakong, of course, to say hi and to introduce our guest. Thank you, Sir Nato. So welcome everybody to Hashtag Parasabayan on the new channel. And for our guest today, I'm so excited to welcome someone who I completely admire for standing for an issue that is relevant for all of us Filipinos. I am happy to share that tonight we have Mr. Elvin Jerome Austria Laceda. Elvin is the CEO and founder of Rise Up Farmers Incorporated, a social enterprise which promotes equitable use of food resources by empowering farmers with knowledge and skills. Diba? Sobrang relevant nga to the issues we have today. He's also the Chief Operations Officer of Sakahon Marketplace, Inc. And in line with his mission to promote farming to more youth leaders, youth leaders like me, Elvin, and Zernato, who's young at heart, yes, uh, Elvin is also the Ambassador of the Department of Agriculture and the National President of the Young Farmers Challenge Club of the Philippines and he's also a member of the United Nations Youth Advisory Board. So welcome Elvin, welcome to the show. Welcome Elvin. Ayun. Elvin, I think your microphone is muted. Oh no, hindi ka pa namin marinig. Uh, maybe take a minute yeah. to connect. But I, I yeah. just want to, while he's reconnecting, uh, let's, I just yeah. want to share that, uh, Sir Nato, it's so important we have Elvin tonight. Kasi lahat po tayo apektado ng, 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 ng nangyayari sa industriya ng agriculture. agriculture That's right? true. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the entire country, um, diba? 
Uh, okay. So hopefully we can have Elvin reconnect as soon as as, as soon as he reconnects, uh, he'll tell us more about journey dito sa of course uh, agriculture. And ta- tawag natin more the adjectives. Um, tech tech as uh, tech uh, enabled is that right? Yes. Agriculture something new, no. So I yes. I didn't. Re- Yes, like uh, Sir Nato was saying, ang ating topic for today is actually sustainable and tech-enabled farming for next-gen farmers. And that's possible because today, we actually have now more modern ways of farming. So ang ginagawa po ng mga ninuno, ng mga ancestors natin, mga lolo at lola natin before, uh, yung sinasabi nila na ang magtanim ay hindi biro, ngayon ay medyo napapadali na dahil sa bagong technology at bagong equipment. And I hope that Elvin can share more about that with us later. But for now, um, like I was saying po earlier, this is an issue that affects all of us kasi lahat naman po tayo pupunta sa palengke, naghahanda ng pagkain para sa lamesa at tayo ay lumalabas mga restaurants para kumain at lahat po yun ay gumagamit ng fruits and vegetables and other crops and produce coming from farms. At I'm sure po, hindi po tayo lahat makakakinig today, makakapag-usap today without our farmers. And again, I'm very happy to welcome Elvin who's finally <laughs> joining us. Good evening, With Elvin. Us, na. Hello, hello. I'm streaming live here in Pam- from Pampanga. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to to be with you tonight. Uh, kayong dalawa, Ariza and Sir Nato, you're my idols talaga uh, in terms talaga, of sustainable eh. development. <laughs> and and Pero, also... Magpadala ka ng produce dito. Okay oh, lang. sure, sure. <laughs> Just kidding. Sure, okay. sure. Opo, uh, masayang-masaya po ako na makasama kayo ngayong gabi. Mm-mm. Thank you so much, All Elvin. Right. Yeah, let's... Siguro, Sir Nato, to start things off, um, Elvin, gusto naming malaman, yes. first and foremost, what started you on this journey? What led you to your advocacy today? Yeah, I'm from yeah. Pampanga, Lubao, Pampanga. Lubao, Pampanga is an agricultural town. And uh, I grew up uh, with my grandfather, who was a fisherman and a farmer. And mm-hmm. also the community na nakikita ko na maraming nahihirapang mga farmers and fishermen. And also, I realized na even though I am a young person, pwede akong may gawin. Pwede akong makapag-contribute sa pagbabago. Pero noong una, I was thinking, how I can contribute? Uh, so, nung nagkaroon uh, ng opportunity to uh, makapag-aral ng kolehiyo, uh, naka kuha tayo ng scholarship from uh, former President Arroyo and I got, uh, I took agriculture engineering as my uh, uh, major sa college. At yung experience ko doon sa Bataan Peninsula State University enabled me to to see things differently and also to 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 know what I can do. And then after noon, uh, uh, nakakuha tayo ng scholarship to study in Hawaii sa Brigham Young University. And, and, and naka, dun ako lalong na-open yung mind ko na I can do something to, for the Philippines and for the Filipino farmers. Uh, and right. then, kaya bumalik ako dito sa Pilipinas. So, how long were you there? Alos apat na taon po ako sa, sa Hawaii. And nakapag-work uh, din po ako ng ilang buwan sa Washington, D.C. Amazing. So I also noticed from your profile that uh, ikaw ang talagang founder and heads ng mga companies that you're working with today. Uh, and usually, diba, that's not something a young person would right away want to do. So what led you to this journey of, be- of being at the leadership teams of your company? <laughs> at first, it was uh, difficult kasi unang-una... Uh... I did not grow in in a se- setting na meron akong role model uh, sa entrepreneurship no pero the experience I had in Hawaii uh, dun sa entrepreneurship uh, uh kumuha din akong entrepreneurship courses aside from from the political science major enabled me to know na as an entrepreneur I can also do things back home uh, sa Pilipinas uh, especially sa agriculture entrepreneurship 
And then, uh, being the founder of a startup company is not very, very easy. Kasi yeah. you know, uh, funding, at the same time, uh, yung network. At ang kagandahan naman, I have very helpful Filipino, fellow Filipino students in Hawaii that helped me uh, and are continually, continuously helping me. And then dito sa Pilipinas, uh, we started with only 17 farmers in Lubao. And then mm-hmm. from that experience, it enabled us to, to grow and maximize opportunity and to launch another startup last year, which is Sakahon. So, uh, okay. So, uh, Elvin, when you say you're doing something new, I mean, for our audiences, can you tell us, like, because you're talking about tech and stuff like that, but how, how, I mean, how does it... Uh, sit with the you know, current agricultural situation natin. Of course, alam mo na five hectare land holdings and yeah. um, may problema tayo sa agricultural extension, sa inputs. Uh, ang agricultural production natin is very small. And when you talk about, say, for example, not for anything, we're not saying our agriculture is bad, but when you talk about agricultural modernization, we, we do lag behind. And yeah. that, I think, really, I don't know, that... Uh, our production or our productivity is so low compared to our Asian neighbors. So, I, I mean, how are you addressing this space? How are you, how do you, how do you, kumbaga, itong mga existing uh, land holdings, itong existing farmers, how, how does that work with them? Or uh, is the innovation in a particular group, uh, your group of next-gen farmers, uh, are you planning to cascade this or make this available to other farmers? You know, alam mo naman sa Pilipinas, di ba? Uh, well, it's a series of, uh, there, there are cities na malaki, highly urbanized cities, and then when you go into the interiors of, ano, there's a population, and then interior barangays, that's all agricultural space, <laughs> di ba? And there's so much land, and of course, alam naman natin, this is an asset, no? If you're oh. able to use the assets very well, then, di ba, ang laki mong, productivity that we can that we can gain the value that we can create so please tell us more about what you do on on those aspects sure uh, actually as a young person uh, talagang na realize ko talaga na very complex ang agriculture kaya siguro yeah. very few young people want to uh, be part or contribute kasi talagang kung tutusin ako I've been here for siguro I can say almost a decade, decade na sa industry uh, still learning uh, pero very complex napakaraming external factor uh, that contributes either to the success or uh, uh, failure of the sector so pero nung inisip ko itong Rise Up uh, back in 2017 my only, yung pinaka bottom line lang no, nung in, uh, during our startup po, I, is to increase the household income of farmers. And how can we do that? So, nag-backtrack kami. How can we do uh, that of helping farmers, enabling them to earn better? So, we identified a few things. First, we narrowed down uh, activities, key activities that we can do to help farmers earn better. First yes. is market. Second is to reduce their cost. So those are the two things we focused on. And then mm-hmm. while doing the pilot program in Pampanga, we realized that we need to build a good foundation of literacy, literacy among the farmers mm-hmm. first. So we created our, our own community-based farm school system. That's okay. That's the innovation is not the first step of our innovation is not actually about the the hardware of technology but it's more of investing in the in the people social innovation mm-hmm. first so what we did mm-hmm. we we created a 3 month program where farmers learn financial literacy values formation at the same time working together as a team no so it mm-hmm. create new habits to, with them. So, and, mm-hmm. okay. How is that delivered? How is the training delivered? 
So during that time, since 2017, it, it is delivered in person po. We form a group of 25 farmers in a community mm-hmm. and and they do they study once a week as a team and then they return home to apply what they've learned. So it's a 10 to 12 week module program. And then after they finish, they become part of the network of Rise Up. They become part of our kumbaga, partner farmer program. Because the next step mm-hmm. po nito, I we will purchase their pro- produce. We become their market. At the same time, we give them data what the market needs. So... Uh, so far, since we launched our program, farmers' income increased from uh, na twenty to forty percent compared to what they they used to have before uh, uh, yes. uh, with the traditional middleman system. So, yeah, we were creating, we were disrupting the system in in the, sa mga kabaryohan or sa kanayunan, and we're oh. trying to show to the young people that there is money in agriculture. Yeah. Ang galing, ang galing. Uh, Elvin, I, I yes, Sir Nato, go ahead. I was I was going to ask, just, is this particularly just for rice or you have high value commercial crops or others? Sorry, ah. Uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> opo, opo. Noong una namin <laughs> nilaunch si Rice Up, nag-umpisa po kami sa rice farmers. Pero kaya okay. din, pinangalan din namin siyang Rice Up. So, hindi lang rice dapat. So, sa Central Luzon kasi po, which is the majority of where the rice is coming from, yes. uh, oh. hindi po, yung area, may iba kasing area na hindi naman rice lang ang pwedeng itanim. Mm-hmm. Kasi if they wait for months before they earn money, they, they'll, they'll yeah. just uh, uh, cycle. maging bari, uh, mal, malulubog po sila sa utang. At the same time, wala silang dumadating na income. So that's why we mm-hmm. named it Rice Up on uh in addition to rice so we have high value crops um uh, low land vegetables and other commodities spot that we uh manage in rice up and in sakahon yeah visa yes. <laughs> i wanted to ask then elvin since you mentioned social engineering you already mentioned that my 20 to 40 percent increase in income how about the behavioral changes because i know mm. that that's also an issue that the DA and other agencies have been trying to help farmers with yeah. to improve their uh, perception kung paano nga kumita, paano mag-compute, paano magplano ng kanilang mga phases of farming. So, how did you accomplish that and what has been the impact? <laughs> That's very difficult, Ariza, no? Kasi, and, uh, kung tutuusin, yung cooperative system natin, we have a cooperative system in the Philippines uh, as well as other countries. And actually, it's the best model for our small farmers to to improve their lives. However, the cooperative system is not fully utilized or optimized. Uh, so, dahil nga, dun sa sinasabi mong uh, behavioral patterns uh, uh, and, and, and we have experienced that. Like, for example, kami, nung dumating kami sa community, although kilala ko ng ibang mga farmers dito, oh, anong gagawin mo dito? Ang bata-bata mo pa, mas, ma- mas matanda kami sa'yo, mas marami kaming alam. So, our farm school enable our farmer, our farm, our farm, our farm school system enable our farmers to understand that meron pang pwedeng i-improve yung kanilang buhay. No? that there are things that they need to change so that they can be prosperous. Kasi ang, turo, ang tinuturo sa farm school natin, prosperity mindset. It's not poverty mindset. Farmers are not poor. No? It's just mismanaged. So, um, and also, uh, we saw a lot of changes. Uh, nakapagbuo tayo, ng, nakatulong tayo sa kanila na to to be to create their own farmers association, farmer cooperatives, and most importantly in Davao City, where we that's actually mas marami kaming beneficiaries doon sa Pakibata District. That's a former uh, insurgency area, yung yeah, Pakibata yeah. District. Uh, and and more than one thousand one hundred farmers finished our program in that area, and we saw tremendous change doon sa area yun. Uh, kasi nung dumating kami doon, kaka, ano lang, kakabukas lang nung, kasi bundok yun eh, kakabukas lang niya for development. And tumulong kami to sustain the peace and 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 development in the area. 
with the lens of agriculture entrepreneurship. So now, for uh, and dami ng uh, uh, farmer entrepreneurs in that area, and then we saw uh, young people that are investing their time and resources in agriculture. And wala nang yeah. malaking incidence of, of killing because of insurgencies mm-hmm. in that area. Yeah, because I think at the end of the day, parang kaya the young people shun from, ano, from investing their time on agriculture kasi the models na alam nila is the poverty model from farming. Eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, <laughs> eh, kung mayaman tayo, di, hindi na dapat kayo nagsasaka or something. Parang they see other things or they see na oh, mag-teacher ako, mag ako or something na in, in the province kasi if you're a teacher, you're well-respected and you don't go into agriculture. But well, there are some differences. No? Like when you talk about North Luzon, dalawa kasi, they have farms and they have OFW that are high-paying. Lalo na mga Iloco side. So they have land holdings at the same time, they have relatives coming from Hawaii or the US who are nurses or ano. So you, I, I had an experience of doing consulting work in that area and a lot of the personnel minsan hindi pumapasok. Sabi ko bakit? May farm naman daw sila. Tsaka may naman silang monthly remittance coming from their relatives. So I, they, 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 they actually don't need the work. Parang gano'n eh. Or, so it also affects the behavior in a different way. Of course, I'm not generalizing. It, it's just for some people. No? In other areas, like alam naman ni Arisa to, sa bar, uh, we know that the, the poorest regions are also in, in, uh, in the south. No? Um, so I'm happy that pero teka, you said Davao, what are they you know, what are they into? What are they planting? Oh, in, in Pakibata they... district. Yes, yes. In Pakibata district po, that's where the best cacao beans in the world is located. Uh, it, they just, they just okay. sent their beans sa uh, Salon de Chocolat ng Paris and it won as the best beans. Bean. Yeah. And, and and they have lots of coconuts, mango, uh, upland mm. vegetables. So, when we went there, talaga po, talagang we're we're one of the first social enterprise who were allowed okay. to enter into the area, and I'm so happy that uh, I was still in Hawaii during that time, and Mayor mm. Sara was happened was was just visiting Hawaii during that time, and I pitched the idea, and she said, and her team said, uh, come to Davao. Come to Davao. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went to Davao, and that's in 2018. Yes. And then since 2018, we've been helping to establish the peace in that area. And 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 ang kagandahan po talaga, mara, kasi nakita ng mga tao, eh, there's value in agriculture. Dati kasi it's not focused in in creating value in agriculture. It's it's different setup. So exactly. but, but the people are now seeing that uh, if they develop their lands, their farmlands, at meron namang maayos na na trading. Uh, system, uh, people benefit from it. So, it, yes, it's actually the supply chain, ano, Arisa. Like the last time we, we had a father, the former father Ed Latore, who used to he's the I think with the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement. So they've been doing this. Mm-hmm. They've been doing rural reconstruction for the last fifty years. So ito yung ano, ano ito yung talagang um, maybe government also has to spend a lot more uh, than what it's spending now. Pero, uh, I mean, from that experience, ang ganda-ganda. Kasi, uh, <laughs> alam mo, 20 years ago, a friend of mine from an advertising agency told me, you know, Nato, if the Philippines is not into food production, we will really lag behind. Kasi all the rest of Europe and all those places would not be producing food. But if the Philippines produces food, like what you said, chocolate, did you know that um, uh, dark chocolate, yung cacao beans, no, from cacao beans, actually um, helps reverse aging? Yeah. If you drink the, ano, the, so it's actually a parang fountain. Oh, I think no one has heard that topic. <laughs> we lost it. But yeah, I, I I actually wanted to ask since na mention na nga niya yung supply chain and I think it's a universal problem for so many farmers here in the Philippines to be able to sell their produce at a reasonable price. So yes. I don't want to reveal your whole business model, but maybe for the farmers and farm 
uh, entrepreneurs who are listening, paano nyo na ma-manage na magkaroon ng reasonable prices na nabibili yung produce ninyo? Yes. Um, what we do, Ariza, so yung mga nag-graduate dun sa farm school system natin, they become, kumbaga, our accredited partners kasi they can now embrace innovation, di ba? So, ang ginagawa natin, we buy them higher than what the current farm gate price. For example, uh, yesterday, ang presyo ng kamatis sa farm gate is 7 pesos. We bought it for 14 pesos per kilogram. Wow. So relatively, is higher. No, Actually, doubled siya. Yes. Pero it's not hurting our business. It's a win-win. It's a win to our client. It's a win for the farmers. Kasi um, the model that we've been using uh have been benefiting the farmers. So, kumbaga, ang, ang, ang nangyayari kasi, uh, we work directly with institutional buyers then. Kasi to mga institutional buyers, they don't want to talk with many individual farmers, di ba? So, what we do, we work with them, consolidate the, fa- the produce, and sell it directly. Ang gandahan dito, the layers are simplified. The supply chain, uh, is better. So, si Rise Up manages the logistics. Sakahon manages the marketing. And we use data analy- data and information. For example, lang dun sa tanong marketing supply chain. We have the data of what our client, what the market needs three to six months ahead of time. So, yun yung t- pinapatanim namin sa mga farmers. So, that's what we call market-driven production. Actually, yun talagang kailangan natin para mawala yung oversupply and at the same time, mawa- mabawasan yung food waste. Kasi if the farmer, if the farmers need, uh, if the farmers know what the market needs, that's targeted production kasi. So, yun yung itatanim nila and at the same time, yun ang bibili ng market at a better price and, and it's a win-win solution for the consumers. For the past... Uh, Three months, for example, na nagmahal ang sibuyas and other commodities, uh, we were able to help around 3,000 individual consumers to get affordable produce through our system. At the same time, farmers earn better. Amazing. Um, and I also wanted to ask, kasi yung isa rin na nag inflate ng cost is yung logistics, di ba? Yes. So how is that something that is that something that you're innovating in and is that something that you can also help other farmers innovate in? Isa sa reason Ariza na napakamahal din pagdating sa market ng mga produkto. Napakaraming logistical entities. Yes. Uh, kasi parang walong patong na yung yeah. presyo ng commodity pagdating dun That's sa right. consumer. So what we can do talaga Kasi, for example, tayo ngayon, we are pioneering this, no? So, ang ginawa namin, kami muna yung nag-manage ng logistics para isa lang. At the same time, hindi ni mahal dun sa consumer, tapos patas din yung presyo sa farmer. And also, we work with, uh, we, we are helping the government, the Department of Agriculture with the Kadiwa program, so that yung mga a truck na pwede namang gamitin, yung mga trucks na pwede natin gamitin, ay magamit at the same time, uh, maging mura. So, kasi malaking uh, discount din kasi yun. At ma- ma- malaki din pasalamat namin, in fairness, sa uh, agribusiness marketing services ng Department of Agriculture for helping us. We've, uh, for example, to date, we've, we've moved around 20 metric tons of vegetables through that specific system. Wow. Now, ang cost for logistics. Wow. Okay. And you mentioned the that you're partnering with government agencies, and I think marami po sa ating mga um, fellow Filipinos who are in farming are not yet that aware of the so mm-hmm. many programs that the agency mm-hmm. and attached agencies have to help them. Maybe you can share, especially to uh, agripreneurs or agriculturists yeah. who are listening, kung saan sila pupunta and what they can get. Is it training? Is it free equipment? Is it free seeds? Free yeah, yeah. Seeds? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Siyempre kami, on the, on the private side, uh, as much as possible, we do, we do all we can to help our, our clients and others. No? Pero kagandahan ngayon, the government, uh, invested a lot of funds and resources in agriculture. It's the first time na 
lumagpas ng 100 billion yung budget. Specifically for young people right now, may budget for young farmers. And this year, actually next month, mag-open uli yung grant process, grant awards. Uh, it, this is for the whole Philippines, all provinces. Young people from 18 to 30 years old can submit an idea, a business proposal, and the Department of Agriculture can fund it through the Young Farmers Challenge Fund. So it's a funding program. So I'm I'm part of the first batch of beneficiaries done, and, and there are around 2,800 individual beneficiaries throughout the country. So the wow. first level, you'll get 50,000 to start your business idea. All right. And then the next level, you'll get another 150 dun sa mga winners, and at the same time, another 150 or 200,000. Depende kung group kayo or individual. So, uh, watch out for the announcement. It's, it's It will be March for those 18 to 30 years old. And then sa training naman, napakaraming training ngayon sa Agriculture Training Institute. And actually, I'm proud to say then na uh, I'm a graduate of TESDA, Organic Agriculture Production. Napakaraming free training ng TESDA in agriculture. And they're looking constantly for students. So young people can avail of that. And, and um, lastly, sa mga farmers ngayon, if they form an association or cooperative, they can access uh, and can get free machines like four-wheel tractor, harvest, combined harvester. And I per- I've personally... Uh, worked with farmers who already received their machines. Are they have Filmec. Have yes, yes, from Filmec, from Filmec. Mm-mm. Okay, you mentioned earlier na um, cooperatives, no? Uh, can you elaborate more kung paano nag-operate yung mga, collab- uh, mga cooperatives sa ating bansa? And I think also baka sa mga nakikinig ng mga kooperatiba ngayon or farmers who would like to set up a cooperative, this is also an entity that in itself, di ba, nag apply for grants, nag apply yeah. for equipment that they can share. So baka you can shed light more on how cooperatives are helping us in the agricultural recovery and growth. Uh-huh. So uh, malaki talaga yung role ng mga kooperatiba to help their individual members to to get the value, no? nung kanilang hard work. Um, ang, ang napakaraming cooperative sa buong Philippines and, 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 and unfortunately, very, very few ang nags- nagsasucceed. And it's because of organizational management. Actually, based on research, that's one of the main reasons din. No? Kasi minsan naaway-away, minsan naman kamakamag-anak, minsan politiko pa yung chairman or president ng kooperatiba. So, so the, the reason why we have, again, the farm school program to enable these individual farmers to know for themselves that they can be self-reliant and to become self-reliant, they can they need to form a group. Kasi the reason why we need to form a group, napakaliit ng ating mga farmlands, especially because of the land reform. No? Uh, nung na-reforma yung mga lupa na bigay sa mga magsasaka, the next question is, what tools do they need? to become successful. Minsan, binibigay lang yung land, pero walang tools na binibigay. So, that's the reason there is cooperatives. Kasi napakaliit ng ating mga farmlands na na-divide. So, uh, napakarami nilang ma-access na benefits from the government now. Kasi ang policy ngayon, kung hindi sila grupo, hindi sila pwedeng makakuha ng mga uh, resources. So, at the same time, kami rin sa Sakahon and Rise Up, we work with them uh, para collective sila na, kung pwede nga sila nang bumili sa sarili nilang mga produce, yung kooperatiba, and then we work with them to provide them the data, the technology, especially sa uh, market-driven production. Kasi that's the way forward eh. Reducing the cost of farming is another story, but the most important thing is yung hinarvest mo ay maibibenta. Kasi yung problema, eh, daming harvest minsan, very good, high quality harvest, pero pagdating sa merkado, binabarat lang. Mm, yes, and marami tayong nakikita minsan na nababalita na mga tinatapon na lang, di ba? Mm, yes. Of uh, fresh produce being uh, going to waste because of this. So, um, 
We'll take a break for a while. Elvin, thank you so much for your insight so far. Uh, Sir Nato is experiencing some technical difficulties, but he'll join us in a while. Uh, so please stay tuned. We'll have a break for a few minutes and then we'll go back to speak with Elvin a bit more. So mas mapapag-usapan pa natin yung mga issue ng agricultura ngayon. We'll talk a little bit more about how youth can get more involved in farming. And we'll also ask Elvin what he sees sa future ng farming dito sa Pilipinas. So this is Para Sabayan on the new channel and we'll see you in a few minutes. again to the new channel Spara Sabayan and the new channel is an online alternative new media platform of online shows for people on the go. Please watch all our shows as seen on screen and imagine having your own show, your own playlist, your own content, but we make it easier for you. TNC aims to transform the lives of our viewers through engaging authentic and original content. Our channel is a responsible, global, 24-7 platform showcasing Filipino talent, global influencers, cultural intelligence, and ingenuity. And tonight, you're watching Para Sabayan with Elvin Laceda, the CEO and founder of Rise Up Farmers Incorporated. So this show actually is something you can watch live or replay via Facebook or YouTube. Just follow us on IG or listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So just search hashtag TNC now. TNC now. For sponsorships, please email now at the new channel channel.com or send us a DM. Enjoy these life-changing shows because we made them for you. And again, welcome back. Uh, Sir Nato is here and we're again ready to go to the second part of our show, talking about farming, talking about agribusiness, talking about making farming sustainable and tech enabled using data market planning and we're also talking about youth and how they can get into farming diba po ba sir nato and dami na po nating natutunan so far from elvin yes 
<laughs> okay, I think uh, Sir Nato is still experiencing some technical difficulty, but siguro po, let's bring Elvin back so we can spend the next 20 minutes talking more about farming. Hi, Elvin. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you, Ariza. Grabe, ang dami na nating napag-usapan. And honestly, these past uh, half hour, I've been in awe of what you were talking about because True. it's really ingenious solutions. Na habang sinasabi mo, parang naisip ko, that does make sense. Bakit nga ba hindi to nagawa pa before or hindi to nagagawa ng mas madalas? So I hope that there are so many more farmers and stakeholders in the agri-industry listening now kasi sobrang importante na mga kinakwento mo today. And speaking of kwento, um, siguro just to make this more uh, tangible for all of our viewers out there, meron ka bang mga inspiring or success stories of specific farmers na gusto mong ikwento to inspire other people as well to join and support the industry? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I can share two stories. First is of Nanay Merli. So uh, we've been uh, helping and working with uh, Bayambang Pangasinan farmers since 2020, uh, especially during the start of the pandemic. And then, um, uh, nagkaroon ng crisis sa onions, di ba? And, yes. and majority ng kanilang uh, production kasi is onions. And then, ang nangyari, uh, kahit mataas yung retail price sa Metro Manila, di ba umabot ng 700? Yes. So, napakababa ng uh, farm gate price. Farm no? gate price. Actually, yung, yung mga 700 na binili, na binenta sa Maynila, ay nabili lang nung like months ago ng 10 to 15 pesos. 20 pesos per kilogram. So that's very, very... Grabe. Grabe. Ano, nakakagalit. No? <laughs> so, eh ngayon, sakto, nag-harvest sila na ng Merli December and January. And during that time, ma mahal talaga yung sibuyas. So what we did, kung mahal ang sibuyas sa retail, that mahal din nating bilhin. Mm -hmm. So naghanap kami ng mga consumers that are willing to buy onions for only 400 pesos, no? And during that time, 700 pesos yung, yung market yung price. Rate. Yeah. And, and, and uh, binili natin uh, in better prices yung sibuyas nila na yung Merli. Nung panahon na yun, ang, ang sibuyas na price nila is 280 pesos. So we bought it for 350. Tayo lang ang may pinakamataas farm gate during that time. And still, the consumers got it for a lesser uh, affordable compared to the uh, prevailing market price. However, syempre, uh, unjustified pa rin yung 700 or even 400. Uh, that's still unjustified. Pero nakatulong tayo to increase her income better. And uh, not only that, I brought, uh, I invited her with me in a Senate hearing and she was able to to say her, her, her voice, yung kanyang, uh, during that time kasi may usapan regarding imports eh. Yes. yes. Uh, kasi dapat makakabawi pa lang yung mga magsasakang ng sibuyas ng January. Kasi the past two cycles, luging-lugi sila. As in zero mm -hmm. because of army worm. And actually, even yung asawa ni Nanay Merli uh, unfortunately committed suicide because of pagkalugi. Oh, wow. Because of army worm, no? So, Grabe. kaya ko siya dinala sa Senate to, to, to also show a, a story, a, an example of real-life story that policies can impact lives talaga in real sense True. life life and death situation yes so, and death, yes and and so ang kagandahan she was able to go there for the first time in metro manila and and be able to to tell the senators what she thinks about the policy and 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 continuously after that, maraming dumating na opportunity with our onion farmers in that part of Pangasinan and nabili natin in better prices. Na, at bura natin binil, binigay dito sa mga consumer in a rescue by setup dito sa Metro Manila mm -hmm. with uh, with clients such as Landers, Angels Burger, and others that are also, mm -hmm. uh, they enabled us to 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 work with the farmers in a, in a fair trade system. So, yun, yung, yung ginagawa natin sa Rise Up and Sa Kahon, it's not only business. We help uh, also 
in the policy set up policy system that affects agriculture that affects our our farmers ngayon naman uh, maraming kabataan another story naman dahil nakita ng mga kabataan sa Pampanga yung kanilang mga tatay at nanay pupunta sa farm school uh, uh, they are now in agriculture at the same time this uh, pinili nilang mag-aral ng agriculture courses nila so yun ay ensuring that there are next generations of agriculture specialists in the in the community so yun Grabe, grabe yung story, no, Sir Nato? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I think we should get together one of these days because uh, these people doing rescue bites are so good friends. So, Kita Page, Ruri, everybody in, in the community, I think, I don't know. Parang we need to aggregate our efforts uh, so we can really create an impact because we cannot rely on the trader. The traders will just make profits and... Uh, uh, sabi mo nga, totoo yung sabi mo, yung, yung what's happening now is really life and death because uh, even in the entire supply chain, ganon yung problema. I, 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 I remember yung sinabi ni Ed De La Torre before um, and then another person, in, in Naga daw, nagkaroon ng consultation with uh, farmers and businessmen. So the farmers are producing what the businessman did not need in all 10 cases so that means grabe grabe yung ano no, uh, supply chain, uh, supply chain correct so we really need to connect all of the so Arisa, yeah. yes and as elvin mentioned po kanina, um mm -hmm. it's an industry that's really empowering different communities and groups of people like yung na mention yung po sa davao that situation where uh, this kind of sustainable farming actually led to peace. And that in itself is yeah. life over death because they're literally choosing farming over something like, say, choosing a path of violence or choosing to go into banditry or any other terrorist activity. Yeah. So, sobrang important po. Um, and since you also mentioned, Elvin, that you know young people are starting to go into farming and they level up na sila because they're going to college, they're specializing, they're possibly enriching kung ano yung um, traditional knowledge na meron yung mga parents or grandparents nila. Uh, I'm now thinking about the future of farming. Um, na mention, siguro na, na may mention sa yon na ang farming ngayon ay naapektuhan ng climate change. Changes sa climate natin. And isa din yun sa mga napapansin natin ngayon sa Philippines. Like, we are experiencing more intense typhoons than before. There are areas of the Philippines that don't usually experience rainfall, but now they do. So, how does that um, affect farming for you? Uh, I think nag-freeze po si Elvin. So, we'll get back to him. Pero siguro, while uh, he's taking the time to reconnect, uh, some of the lessons po na na-share niya earlier that might be relevant to those of us listening today. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're in the agri or farming industry, or if you're, if you're interested to go into it, marami pong mga ahensya ng pamahalaan ang gustong tumulong. Um, so maaari po tayong lumapit sa DA Tulad ng sinabi ni Elvin, uh, marami po silang training na binibigay for free under the Agricultural Training Institute. And meron din pong nabibigay na free equipment or siguro po equipment na uh, provided under certain terms ng Filmec. And I think there will also be other agencies who can provide seedlings and other knowledge or even the networking or community na kailangan po ng mga aspiring yeah. farmers or agribusiness holders. And uh, Elvin also mentioned na ang private sector. So companies like him, companies like Rise Up and Sakahon yeah. are also very open to helping others who may be new in the industry or wanting to connect with other stakeholders. Uh, that's true. So even, let's say, for example, in the aspect of dairy and livestock livestock production, because that's that's a growth area for, for Philippine agriculture because we haven't really made a dent, no? Uh, we're still trying to do cooperative uh, works with, uh, with different countries. But, you know, that's also an area where production and productivity can really be enhanced. 
And alam mo, Arisa, it, it's a good thing. You young people are here. And uh, siguro, ano, Elvin, no? maybe we can do a, some sort of summit. Um, hopefully through through TNC and uh, hashtag para sa bayan. We could, because we know all the players. <laughs> we know all the players that can really help this country. We just need to gather together. We have Kita PH, there's sila, sila Jason, sila Mark, uh, everybody, even sila Ru, everybody. And, you know, a lot of people want to do really good. And I'm just saying, my opinion lang, we really need to get together. Kasi we're doing it in in different, ano, in, in different silos, but um, uh, we don't know the others. So maybe if we get acquainted, we can do mega projects or, or projects that would really create um, sustainable impact over time, uh, yeah. regardless, of, regardless of who the president is. No, I think the important the important thing here is the energy of our young people. Uh, I think in my in my uh, one of my advocacy is also to bring in young people in government because I came in uh, in government as a youth volunteer uh, at the time President Aquino at 16. I became uh, I I went into government as a full time uh, public information officer at 19. So I'm asking the Gen Zs and the millennials to come in. I think my pamangkin who is recently assistant for communications in the national dairy Institute, uh, administration is also in in his mid 20s so kailangan po natin ng energy ng young people like ariza elvin and you know but before we go <laughs> and this no uh, uh while you were discussing and i was having my internet problems it spread in 951 but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really been an interesting discussion, and these are the types of discussions you want to have here on Para sa Bayan. We really want to build a, a country for our young people, na talagang, you know, um, a first world country for, for the Philippines. No? So, uh, Elvin and Ariza, we have a few minutes. <laughs> can you can you tell us like how we can work together, how how we can encourage our young people to go into farming? Because uh, I, my friends, my friends in Jensan are also deeply into farming. All their kids, they have a business in the Jensan city, but they have farms in Palomolo or somewhere else. So, please encourage our young people to go into agriculture um, and uh, support them. Sige, Elvin. Yeah, uh, thank you for mentioning Mindanao, sir. I really believe that Mindanao is the land of promise, especially in food True. production. So, um, the, ako lagi kung itong sinasabi whenever, whenever I speak in any setup that in order for us to eradicate poverty, we need to invest a lot of resources in agriculture. Yes. Uh, kasi when, when there are, kapag malaki ang food production natin, magmumura yung pagkain, pagmurang pagkain, uh, ilang mga bata na Ilang kasi mga bata hindi nag kasi they want to work so that they can eat. Yeah. So, uh, people can go to school. and I mean, children can go to school and be educated and get a better life. So, uh, it's really food, food uh, policy, food industry, and at the same time, uh, couple it with entrepreneurship will enable us to su sustain the development. It's not only charity work, but it's really a sustainable work that will enable our people to to really uh, become prosperous, especially in the rural areas. Uh, the way we can work together, uh, we are still open for uh, for those who are manufactured food manufacturers or institutional uh, buyers that we can uh, work with the data that they have. At the same time, yung data that they have, like for example, specific need nila yun kasi ginagawa po namin ngayon sa startup namin what kung ano po yung specific need ng market yun yung itinuturo yes. namin sa mga magsasaka para yung ipo-produce nila yung talagang kailangan na specs like for example yeah. what variety of seeds what uh gaano kahaba anong aroma or color yeah. if meron man specific so market driven production talaga and also in in the in the in the in in your Oh, uh, nawala po si Elvin for a while, but since he was already talking about his company, siguro po I'll bring up, ah yes, there, um, 
Elvin, please continue. And also, please mention how these companies can contact you and rise up, if ever. Yes, hindi ka namin marinig. Maybe you can reconnect quickly. Tapos, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sir, nata ang tinig plug na lang siguro their, their, ano, their Facebook page. Yeah, what, what we can do is uh, you can uh, put it in the private chat, Elvin, and then uh, our, our director, our backstage will put it on uh, on the screen para they, they know what, uh, they know how they can contact you. Alam mo, Arisa, this has been a very ano, no, interesting discussion. I think like, like, like the previous discussion we had with attorney Hernando, there's so much promise in Mindanao no? because it's really the land of promise. <laughs> yes. So I think I know what we're looking at are people who will implement the I know the uh, the promise to field. So yes. be, go ahead. <laughs> Some more. Hello, right. Paul, can you hear me now? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I want to greet my Mindanaoan friends. Mind the bee, sa inyong tanan. Actually, I speak fluently in Ce- in Bisaya, in Cebuano. So I really love Mindanao. I I I used to serve as a full time missionary for two years in that area, and and uh, and uh, anta gusto lang sabihin those who want to uh, work with us. Actually, we were open to collaboration talaga. You can reach me in my email, elvinlaseda at gmail.com. My number, I can give my personal number. Yeah. I actually sent it in our chat. Um, uh, 0956-772-0554. We need more young people in this movement. Uh, and and people like Ariza and Sir Nato are very, are, are examples of, of how we can create change in our community. So oh, that, very young. <laughs> so that many people will benefit from it. And also, if I can share with them, Ariza, yung ating Young Farmers Challenge Club of the Philippines. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, meron, meron tayong mga chapters sa lahat ng probinsya. You can, you can look for our Facebook page, like our page, and uh, it, post namin in the coming weeks yung link so that you can register in the provincial chapters. Kasi that way, we are welcoming young people kahit hindi kayo agricultural related ang pinag-aralan ninyo. Or currently you're not agricultural related ang ginagawa. Kasi in agriculture right now, even like graphic designers, accounting students, or, or education majors, we really need your help to, to create better solution for for our farming industry. Thanks, Elvin. Elvin, ano ba yun? Yung young farmers, ano? By, by age or by energy? <laughs> actually, <laughs> we have... <laughs> yes, actually, sir, meron kaming uh, honorary members. Honorary members you know? can be six, 36 and above. Yung mga young members po are 30, uh, 35 below pa. Okay. Uh, also... I'm also a mentor for the Unif- uh, UST Innovation Center. So if you have startups who need help, uh, they can become incubators for as long as they're in the UST system or they're at home. <laughs> but anyway, there are other innovation centers we could, uh, we are networked with. So tulungan natin yung mga young innovators as well. So I nako ang saya ng discussion natin. Uh, the, the time is so short. We want to, yes. this is like content that, should we go out there? So uh, my suggestion is let's do a, some sort of right, a mini summit. Um, we can host it here in Quezon City for agriculture. Or if you want, we can do it in the in the province. Uh, either way, we should have uh, if we can we can help young farmers. Uh, na we will we will provide support and meet the guests and the speakers and the sponsors. Um, that we can extend this no, to be well, kung gusto nyo, Mindanao, then yung venue, pwede rin. Uh, either way, we, we have the network, we just want to, we, we just want this to fly. No, I, I mean, and daming yes. sumutulong sa Philippine agriculture and sa farmers natin. And at the end of the day, this is our lifeline, this is our lifeblood, uh, agri and youth. So, kailangan merong, merong some sort of synthesis yan, no, yung the energy of the young people and uh, agriculture. Um, this is very close to me because my my uncle, my uncle, 
my lolo was the one of the first agriculturists in the philippines he was trained by uh, the americans in the commonwealth he took care of the upper colony in culion made it uh, really really uh, self-sustaining and also the alabang livestock farm so he was really deeply involved and of course my uncle was vice chancellor of uplb <laughs> in uh, in animal husbandry so I'm, I'm this is really close to my heart so yun, um i know we don't have time arisa thank you so much for filling in the gaps Ika nga, but uh, uh we'd like to thank elvin uh, Laceda, and uh, his entire team we'd like to thank arisa also for inviting him ladies and gentlemen that has been our episode for tonight we'd like to this is episode 29 sustainable tech enabled farming for next gen farmers so um this is all the time that we have hopefully next week we we have another interesting topic uh, to discuss so Arisa, say, say your farewells <laughs> yes thank you so much to elvin for being part of the show this is such an honor being able to speak to him sobrang na inspire po ako personally and i'm sure that many of our listeners were also inspired and will hopefully start supporting farming and farming efforts more fervently in the next days and thank you so much for joining us today and we will hope to see you next week right so that's it guys this has been #rasbayan on TNC god bless you bye 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 Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for...